Assalamu alaikum and welcome to a brand new episode of CNB. I'm Siddharth Vinayak Patankar and we are coming to you this week from just outside the capital of the Sultanate of Oman, Muscat. And we are here, of course, to drive this very hot new car. Now, cars like these are, of course, uh, pretty much a common sight in the Arab states. But that's not what brought us here. It's also the stunning locales and the scenery and uh, the Bentley Continental. That's the car in question. It's the second generation of this car looking absolutely smoldering in this red. And uh, let me quickly tell you that it's uh, also the new GT with the new V8. So there's plenty to take you through. Let's get straight into it. doubtful about what we'd get by way of locations when I first heard that this drive would happen in the Sultanate of Oman. It was a very different choice indeed, but once I saw the rather unusual countryside with its arid and rough terrain, I was spellbound. I always knew we could expect good roads, because otherwise the drive wouldn't have been here in the first place. But just how good? Well, that was again a wonderful surprise. So the craggy, broken, sand-coloured, rocky hills were a great contrast to the black top tar roads. And so it was a great setting then to test the new second generation of the Bentley Continental GT. The only downside? The strict 120 km per hour speed limit. Oman is one of the Gulf Cooperation Council or GCC states. It's got a population of about 2.8 million people, of which the locals make up about 2 million. The rest are migrant workers from countries like India, Pakistan and the Philippines. Annual car sales here are in the region of about 100,000 units. Now that's just about monthly sales in India, right? But low import duties mean that virtually every car maker and every car brand are present in the market. Of course, it is dominated by the likes of Toyota. Luxury brands though are also well received. After all, this is the Middle East, isn't it? Of course, for Bentley, there are other markets besides the Middle East that are perhaps a tad more important. In 2011, the US was its largest market, but having sold nearly 2,000 cars in China last year too, it is expected to surpass the United States as Bentley's biggest market in 2012. So now you probably understand why the new GT is dressed in this shade, and I simply love it. usually get cars like these in shades like this, right? It's always silvers and dark blues and blacks. So I was absolutely thrilled. I haven't stopped grinning since I found out that we're going to get to drive the Dragon Red. That's what they call it. It's a nice metallic sort of a shade up front. And in fact, the whole face of the car, it pretty much tells you it's a Bentley Continental. Remember when the car debuted at the Frankfurt show last year, we showed it to you and we said they haven't strayed too much from that design language. And I think that's a brilliant, brilliant move because uh, it is such a good looking car. So why really fix something that ain't broken? Very contemporary looks and they are still so because uh, what they've done is they've tried to sharpen it up just a little bit. You've got these daytime running LEDs in there now. That's pretty much a norm in the luxury space. In front, uh, the famous Bentley look is maintained with the grille. And uh, this one's been finished off in a nice sporty black, but yet it's edged with chrome. So it does look pretty upmarket. The Bentley logo and uh, take a look at that. It's not black. It's been finished off in red as well. So that's a nice little touch. And uh, as you uh, take a look at the car, it does have a slightly mean, a little bit more of an aggressive look overall, doesn't it? Now, I have to say that uh, the fact that it's got a huge V8 engine is complemented by the fact that you've got so much metal up here. And I think uh, that attracts a lot of attention. What else uh, I think attracts uh, a lot of attention is uh, the way the alloy has been finished off. Of course, you have a choice of patterns and you can get all sorts of customization on this car. But this particular one has been finished off in a really sporty sort of a uh, overall feel. And so even on the inside, you've got lots of leather and metal. And uh, as you come around to the back, again, very typical of what the Bentley uh, Continental always was, but they've gone and sort of exaggerated the bulge here in the fender just a little bit and yet maintained a straight line through it. I think that adds a lot of character, very classy tail light treatment. And one quick uh, touch here, the Bentley logo at the back also serves as the boot uh, release. So all you need to do is press down the B and it goes up. So uh, that's a nice little touch. And uh, well, overall, I have to say, very good looking car. And even though I'm not Chinese, I simply love it. Hmm, so the looks are spot on and absolutely drool worthy. More aggressive with sharper lines and creases in the metal. 
The twin headlamps with the all-new LED daytime running lights are a great signature now. But given that Bentley has decided to step down to an 8-cylinder, will it also be just as tantalizing? The car is now no longer just a standard W12-engined beast, while you can still opt for that massive 6-litre 12-cylinder version, there's also the new engine variant, which of course was the car that I had with me. It was in 2008 that Bentley had declared that by 2012, it would reduce fuel consumption on its cars by a staggering 40%. The British car maker has actually managed to achieve this target. The new GT uses a 4-litre engine that has been developed as a part of an engine joint venture with sister brand Audi. The new V8 engine uses cylinder deactivation technology, which essentially allows it to shut off four of the eight cylinders when the car doesn't really need all that power. This means the engine runs like a smaller displacement unit at lower speeds and when cruising and saves fuel. Of course, a whole lot of other measures have also contributed to the drop in consumption. The brand new 8-speed automatic ZF gearbox for one, Bentley has moved from the 6-speed to the 8-speed. It's smooth, responsive and very sporty in its character. Yet, it helps burn lesser fuel. Great, isn't it? Of course, moving from the 12 to the 8 cylinders in the first place is a big plus too. And then there is the overall weight reduction as well. Now, there are many other measures that add up to the impressive 40% drop in fuel consumption over the previous GT. Okay, now let's get to the fun stuff. The repeated warnings about radar cameras and speed limits notwithstanding, I was really looking forward to getting this baby on the road. The first thing I noticed, the car sounds terrific. Now at this end of the market, you of course expect a certain level of refinement and performance. And the great news is that you get both on the Continental for sure and uh, then some. But what's also great is that uh, Bentley hasn't lost out on that little sporty element. There was a little bit of a naughty character to the Continental GT always, and that's very much still in place, which means that you can throw it about just a bit and you can have some fun with it. Now, I have to also tell you here that uh, there is something optional here that's been thrown in, and it's the sport exhaust package. This car has it, which means that you have a nice throaty, growly sort of a sound that you get from the engine when you put the throttle down. But when you're not driving it in a very sporty fashion, it's nice and calm and pretty quiet. So uh, I like that. I think that's a nice touch. And I think a lot of buyers are definitely going to opt for it. I got a chance to drive fast through city traffic and through winding hilly sections. The response was electric. The car downshifts quickly too on demand. And so you can really push it. Now, I especially enjoyed the paddle shift option to change gears. Again, very nice and quick. The engine and steering response were a dream, making the hill sections on this road particularly fun. The Continental GT was always a sporty, aggressive car. The good news is that the V8, even though it's different, hasn't lost out on that character. The engine belts out 500 bhp and offers you ample torque, which comes in at 660 Nm. And yes, as I've said so many times, absolutely loved that ZF gearbox. Being a Bentley, buyers can literally get any color and interior trim, but amongst the choices on offer on exterior paint, I'm already biased to the Dragon Red. Inside, my car had sporty black leather with red stitching, which is complemented with metallic inserts on the dash and console. All really, really sporty. You can, of course, opt for more subtle beiges or blue grays and wood inserts too if you want. Again, there's just really plenty to choose from. Equipment includes a huge touchscreen infotainment system which has high-end audio and Bluetooth phone compatibility. There's also a host of electronics to enhance stability, safety, and allow you to change the damper settings too. That's right, you can go from sporty to comfort modes. That's not new, but I can tell you that I've stayed put in the sport mode for most of my drive. The car can also be raised to get through some speed bumps and potholes. As always, at this end of the market, the catch is the sticker price on this car. Given India's duty structure, the car will end up costing you nearly 2.2 crore rupees. Hmm, pocket change for some perhaps. And that's minus some of the optional equipment, mind you. But it's also not like Bentley is looking to sell thousands of these in India. The company wants to take it slow and so it will persist with having just two dealerships for now in Delhi and Mumbai. Expansion though is inevitable as markets like India and China continue to fuel growth in the future. Of course, the oil-rich Arab states are also a happy hunting ground for luxury car makers. And I can tell you this, 
I felt very much at home and uh, pretty good pulling up at the porch of my hotel in Muscat in this gorgeous new V8. The only trouble was saying goodbye to this car. Do you have the NDTV Profit app? All the markets, all the news and your own homemade, ready-made portfolio available there for you. We will right now answer what you should sell, what you should buy when markets are down. Download at NDTVProfit.com slash apps. Get the best app from the channel you trust.